Welcome to another segment of Nonprofits where we're going to discuss, well, maybe not our favorite state, but at least our favorite state to discuss. Eli, what have you got for us? So back in September of 2023, uh, schools across Florida were required to send in their sex education materials to be reviewed by the state to ensure they aligned with new regulations that strictly enforce abstinence-only education. The new policies state that visual representations of reproductive anatomy nor discussions of different types of sex should be present at any grade level, and that contraceptive are not part of any health or science standard and should only be mentioned as a health resource, banning demonstrations on how to use contraceptives. The language also specifies that children through high school should be taught that abstinence from sexual activity outside of marriage is the expected standard for all school-age students. Now, I don't know if this feeling is surprise or despair, but I definitely worry for the children growing up in Florida. Uh, this story is from Popular by Rebecca Crosby on September 25th, 2024. Well, that was quite a mouthful and <laughs> quite a letdown. <laughs> Now, yeah. now, you and I have had conversations about this topic before uh, because you and I both, in our viewpoint of saying educate children, have, have both been labeled groomers. Now, so what do you think about that? Where, where do you come from? How, how do you feel about that? What's your response, Eli? So... Um... <sighs> I had to look up at one point. I'm like, let me find the actual definition of grooming because maybe I'm wrong. How, why are these people like seeing a similarity between what I'm saying and grooming? And no, it's not the same. It's, it's almost as much different as it could be from what I'm saying, which is give kids accurate information about the world so that they can be prepared. And yeah, you're going to, you know, different things are going to be suitable for different age groups. But if you're not willing to change teach things to your kids about sex or, or, or related topics, there are plenty of people that don't have their best interest in mind that are more than happy to do it for you. And, and by keeping them naive, you're not protecting them. You're, you're keeping them vulnerable. And, and I think too that this article is muddying the waters a little bit when, or not, not the article, but the language of the bill is muddying the waters a little bit here when it says all school aged children, because that is of course talking about very young children from five up to, you know, 10, 11, 12, thir uh, you know, and, and 13, some may even consider young. I, I think that's probably the age where kids should start learning it because most humans are sexually mature by the time they're 13 years old. And these kids are thinking about sex. By the time they finish high school, 57% of people will have already had sex. And if they're not learning it from trusted, knowledgeable adults, they're going to be learning it from ignorant friends or untrustworthy adults or untrustworthy friends or ignorant adults there's any combination of things that can go wrong you it is it i think a parent's it's a parent's responsibility to accurately and 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 be sure that they're accurately uh teaching their kids about sex and and anything that they might want to know about it without shame and and like that stigma because it it, it it can only do more good than harm absolutely you know one thing is as, as you mentioned someone's going to teach your kids and that's going to be someone who is going to do the best they can or someone who as you said is just ignorant of the fact or even worse someone who has ill intent but i can guarantee you that if your kid don't know what they need to know. They, that is something that makes a person who has ill intent, it makes their job easier, not more difficult. Now, Switching over to you for a moment, uh, Jonathan, uh, I know that this ban included bans on contraception and discussion of LGBTQ issues, but one I found particularly galling, and not that the other two aren't, was banning discussion about consent. I mean, don't you think that that is a, should be a required topic, not just for boys or just for girls, because, you know, they, well, sometimes they want to limit it to just one or the other, but that every Everyone needs to understand what consent is. Well, what do you think that was about? Changing sex education to exclude abuse, consent, and violence is just allowing young children to be abused.
used and victimized. Uh, maybe that is what the conservatives want, a ready stable of children who won't complain about them raping them. It sure looks like it, but I'm not going to just accuse them of that. Um, but I, I, he thinks they do protest too much. Um, uh, and so, you know, they're, they're, in having knowing for a fact that several of our representatives in Congress are under investigation for that kind of nonsense, um, it just makes me a little bit more weary and uh, weary and leery about it. Um, but there's already an effect from this BS anyway. Um, and, and in areas where there's comprehensive sex education, not uh, uh, and where, where it's not taught, where comprehensive sex education is not taught, uh, chlamydia, HIV, syphilis, gonorrhea are all on the rise. Teen pregnancy is on the rise. These are areas where abstinence only is taught. Uh, all the things they're trying to prevent are happening more because these kids do not understand what's going on. And so if you don't teach them about it, they're going to experiment themselves. And when they do that, all the things you're trying to prevent are going to go up. And they have. Areas that have comprehensive sex ed, um, the the average exp uh, sexual experience um, was uh, prolonged. In other words, it was later in their teen years um, than otherwise. If it's abstinence only, they tend to have sex earlier. And I think it's just that if, if you don't pay attention and, you know, kids aren't stupid. You treat, if you infantilize them, they're going to throw tantrums and do exactly what you told them not to, right? Guess what? You know, that seems to be borne out by the stats. So if you want your kid to uh, stay celibate until marriage and everything else, then you damn well better teach them an awful lot about sex education because that seems to be the only way to get them to hold off. So, and, uh, but yeah, it's, it's really concerning that they're allowing their kids to be set up to be violently violated by any idiot who comes, uh, comes along, any criminal who comes along by not teaching them about sex. That's stupid. There's, there's a no universe where that's okay. You know, I, I agree. One thing that I have to say is that I know there's this gold standard of, you know, wait until you're married, until you have sex and don't have sex until you find that right person. Well, I, I have a different view on that because I, I think and, and, I, and I know this is not going to be a popular view with some people, but I think you need to try that shit out and see what you like before you make any decisions. So uh, whether it comes down to not just the person that you plan on marrying, but th that just seems like uh, limiting yourself for it, especially considering that if you're going to be in a monogamous relationship with one person for a long period of time, you better at least make sure that it's the, it's the type of person you like, that they have the likes and dislikes you like, and the only way that you're going to know what you like is go out there and find out. So whatever you do, don't wait until you're married, if you get married at all. But that's just my viewpoint now seriously Even. though yeah well you know and then the funny part is is that i know that when when i said that in front of my mother-in-law a long time ago uh, i thought she was about to you know she, she'd have had pearls <laughs> it's against her religion to have jewelry but if she'd have had pearls she'd have probably ripped them off her own damn neck but, you know, you know, kind of talking about what we're discussing on both sides, Eli, you know, Florida leads a nation in HIV cases. Uh, we see what's happened in with the Catholic Church uh, preaching against uh, even condom use or discussion of condoms in places like Africa and what is done to disease there. And w what do you think that we're going to see here in uh, Florida as we see this? And, and, and if it, to me, it feels like it's a goal. They, they want ignorant people because they want want them to be obedient citizens who get who get pregnant yeah. young and have kids and get bogged down into the routine more than anything mm -hmm. else what do you think yeah i mean um i i think you nailed it honestly and and alongside with what uh john pointed i had both of these things that you, you guys said in, in my notes among the 10 states with the highest uh, rate of births among adolescent people capable of getting pregnant um those states from one to ten are mississippi or Arkansas, Louisiana, Kentucky, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Alabama, Texas, West Virginia, New Mexico. And the first eight require abstinence only education. West Virginia, New Mexico have some more progressive, you know, sex education programs. I don't know what's going on there, but. <laughs> 
the first eight of the top 10 highest rates of adolescent birth is the states that require absence only education. So just like you said, it's like both of you have said, kids that are getting taught not to have sex are having it sooner. Because here's the thing, like you said, kids aren't stupid. They're going to school or they're going to church or hearing from their parents, don't have sex, don't have sex, don't have sex. And then getting on Instagram, they're getting on TikTok, they're getting on wherever. And everybody is talking about sex. Everybody is having sex and they're seeing this. And they're like, okay, why are like, what's going on here? Why is everyone in, why are all the adults, these losers? telling us not to have sex and everybody that's cool on TikTok and Instagram that I want to be just like is talking about sex. What's going on here? So they're going to start doing it with no information and we've already established it. And I think what's going to happen is you're going to have just like uh, has been said, you're going to have more um, um, uh, birth STDs. rates. Yeah, more STDs, more adolescent birth rates probably going to knock West Virginia or New Mexico out of uh, ninth or 10th. You'd probably, probably take both of those. Florida could i if anybody could it would be florida um <laughs> and it's you know and they're even the the bill is even the language in this new regulation even talking about restricting uh the use of the word fluids which as um a professor of public health uh, named elisa Barr pointed out that makes it extremely difficult to properly teach about things like uh, sexual transmitted infections like hiv which as you mentioned already has one of the highest rates or florida already has one of the highest rates of hiv infection in the country so I mean, nothing is going to get better here. And, and, and I mean, we're, it's, it's this, this loop, this circle of, of terrible effect after terrible effect, more kids are going to get victimized, more kids are going to make ignorant, uninformed choices and, and cause harm to themselves that way. And, you know, who knows what it's going to take to like, get anything to change back for the better in, in Florida. I agree with you. It does seem like they want an ignorant population. Yes, yeah, more population. Yeah. Too. They yeah, want you to have as many kids as they can so they get butts in the seats in their church and get the tithes. So, you know, mm -hmm. that way they keep their money too going. I agree, Jonathan. I think that they're looking for a, a you know, a nice hetero heteronormative relationship, have a bunch of babies, have them young, and let's have them for God. And, you know, so th this is a hand in hand thing where, you know, the Christians get themselves butts in their seat paying tithes and the corporations get their compliant workforce because once again as we've talked about many times here in Florida anti it's not just anti education of uh, sex education the truth is is that right now i think we're experiencing just a case of anti education when it comes mm -hmm. down to some states, Florida in particular for this. Eli talked about words that were taken out that weren't, they're no longer to be able to be used. And another one that we, I, it may have been mentioned, but I don't recall it, was the word domestic violence, Jonathan. What, what do you think that's about? You know, we, we talked about first we're talking, taking away consent, but now we're not even going to talk about domestic violence? Well, uh, because, who in the world could that be protected? Well, you know, it, uh, domestic violence is often sexual in nature. Therefore, we you can't talk about that in front of the children. Of course not. I mean, you know, why would you want to do that? Well, maybe to prevent them from being victims of domestic violence and breaking the cycle of domestic violence. Or is it that since Christians believe that the man is supposed to be sacrosanct and superior in the household, that he has a right to beat his wife, you know, um, and he has a right to spank his children? It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. I haven't heard or seen that as an actual policy measure, but it seems to be they're kind of tacitly kind of sliding that in under the table here where where it's going to be something that well well you know we're going to normalize injuring people in the home you know and that's kind of like that's a big red flag you know uh, so yeah it's bad that's exactly how i took it because we I mean, first we say okay let's not talk about consent and now let's not talk about domestic violence and yes you mentioned spanking children let's be realistic most of these people who we're talking about who are behind this kind of thing would cheer rah rah round beating your kids too and of course, they would say, oh, it's spanking, not beating. But if you if you hit a kid, it's beating in my book. I, I don't make a distinction there. So, Eli, what do you think? Is Jonathan right? Or are we just heading to a point where we're just easing in another bad behavior? We've talked before about bad behaviors and words being normalized. Are we looking at just one more thing that it feels like we're just trying to slip something else in under the cracks? So we're looking at a normalization of this? You, you would have to think that there's some sort of motivation for 
for taking out education about consent or domestic violence because I can't like as a, a, a cognitively capable adult, I can't imagine looking back on any moment in my life and be like, you know, I wish I knew less about what I was doing at that time. I wish I had less information to make a worse decision or to less like and that's and I don't think that thought ever should occur to any rational human. So for them to think that they're preparing anybody for success by doing exactly that blows my mind. So yeah, you have to think that there's some sort of it's something to be gained from them by remote like by by limiting access to this information to this knowledge because you, like like we've already covered like you're not protecting anybody by not teaching them about, you know, what is and isn't okay. And, and this isn't just about sex or like relationships or, or domestic violence. This is about anything. You can't set somebody up for success by only teaching them the good things. They have to know how to prepare for the bad things. Otherwise, like, cause you're, you're not, you're not only going to have good things, you're going to have bad things come up. And if you're not prepared to deal with them, it doesn't matter how, like, it doesn't matter what you know about the good things. Cause you're never going to get there. Without a doubt. And I, I, I do think that we are seeing exactly these things coming together. And it, it's like you talked about earlier teaching children. And one of my reminders, and I mentioned it to you not long ago was a conversation I had with my youngest. And it was about P Diddy and it was mm -hmm. about the vile, I mean, the uh, canisters of uh, lube, thousand lube canisters of lubes they found. And mm -hmm. it didn't take me very long into that discussion to realize that she didn't understand the purpose of the lube. And OK, well, it's time to have a discussion about that and mm -hmm. explain that, because like anything else, it's either information or it's misinformation. And yeah. that information is going to be to learn from someone who's going to give real information or someone who's not. But, you know, when it comes down to things like lube or what was the word that they said we couldn't use uh, fluids, I, yeah. I can understand some some giggling and some 14 year olds being 14 year olds right. in class about that. OK, I, I get that there's a certain level of awkward to it. But when it comes down to issues like, you know, consent, when it comes down to issues like domestic violence, I, I don't think that there's going to be awkward moments in classes with kids giggling over the fact that, you know, we're talking about these issues. I, I think that they're issues that would be taken very serious. And I, I found it really un unfortunate that some places in Florida are just saying, okay, because our teachers, rightfully so, are so concerned about teaching this to a class of children, because they're going to go home to parents and say things. And if I slip up, it could be my job that they're saying, you know what, we're not going to teach sex ed at all. And that is so unfortunate for the children because they need that information. If nothing else, I would like them to know what consent is. Jonathan, yeah. what, what, what do you think? You, you think that there's, is this something that's going to last or is this something that people no, are going to wake gonna up last. to? Um, uh, Florida is going back to being purple here. Um, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of pushback on the MAGA crap, um, and uh, the the slight majority of people don't like it. So it's going to be here in Florida. I think it's going to eventually go the way of all flesh. But you know, you never know. Uh, they could hang on by their fingernails like they have over the last 20, 30 years, and just you know, and I don't mean just MAGA. I mean arch conservatives have never gone away. They've been here since the beginning of the country. And they've always been working to turn us back into a monarchy. So it's just a matter of, uh, of being aware they're there and uh, having the majority of people and strengthening the middle class and other people who, who tend to decide uh, a lot of these elections and, and other things. But, you know, uh, it's just one of these things you, you cannot. And I, I, you cannot not tell kids that when their grandfather is touching them inappropriately, they sh they shouldn't say anything. Horseshit, you know. And and you can't tell kids that oh. Gee, uh, you know, what did that uh, what did that guy at school uh, say to you? You know, well, he said he wanted to take me into the closet. You really want your kids to say, oh, OK, no. You want them to recognize what's going on and go run and tell somebody. Right. 
not telling them about it is the most dangerous thing you can do for your children. So these people obviously don't care about the kids. That's not what they care about. You know, they yeah, care about I, the points. You know, they, they care about their talking points. That's it. Yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm not sure what they care about because it, it, it doesn't seem to be in anybody's self-interest. And Eli, I, I wanted to give you an opportunity to, to wrap up a couple of things. I, I know you and I talked about before the, the groomer thing and being called yeah. that. And, and so, you know, to those who say this should all be done, at home, not in schools. Well, what do you what do you have to say to that? That's actually that's exactly what I wanted to end on because I think I, I mentioned that earlier. I think parents have a responsibility to do that, but to do it accurately, to a very nuanced degree. Yeah, I think that you know sex should be taught at, at at homes, but I think that gets mishandled more than more than it doesn't because not every you know parent would have a conversation with their child that is the age that that your youngest is about what lube is, and and especially in the in the context of like P. Diddy and what's going on with him, right? So I think parents are notoriously bad at talking to their kids about sex. My parents didn't teach me anything about sex. I learned it all on my own. And I just happened to like eventually at this point kind of have some ideas that are not horrible, right? And I, I think I, I think that I have the right ideas. I hope that I do. And I, I'm always <laughs> trying to make sure that I'm that, you know, that I do. But I didn't learn it from my parents. My my the talk with my dad was like, hey, what do you know about sex? And I lied and I was like, nothing. And he goes, oh, sex sex is a gift from God for parents. And I was like, okay. And he didn't describe anything about it. So like I had to learn these things on my own. And just like I said before, if you, if you don't educate yourself so that you can properly educate your children, someone else is going to do it. And you don't know if that information is going to be true. You don't know if it's going to be safe. You don't know who, if that person is going to be safe. And I, and that, and like, I will, like the last time I invited the, you know, YouTube to call me a groomer, they didn't, they disappeared on me. They failed me. So I'm giving you another chance. I had a whole conversation about talking to kids about sex. Let's talk about it. <laughs> well, you know, Ray, my wife has never gotten that speech from her mom. Her mom never even gave her the sex talk, never even made an attempt. So I guess it's kind of late now, but you know, you, you mentioned the P Diddy moment yeah, at first. <laughs> First, I was like, thanks, P. Diddy, you know, <laughs> appreciate this. But then when I thought Never about it, I was, you know, you. seriously, <laughs> seriously, I did think, though, thanks, P. Diddy, because you life gives you things and opportunities to be aware of what your children do and don't know and what's important for them to know. So, yeah, while there is the thanks, P. Diddy, there's also the thanks, P. Diddy. Thanks, now, P. Diddy. I know he... Well, I guess he... <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, on that note, I, I will say that uh, it's been a good conversation. Jonathan, I, I, I like your, your perspective of it being hopeful about Florida uh, waking up to some of these literally nightmare situations regarding children. However, as an audience, if you want to see more of the nonprofits, click down below.